Welcome to the Broken Sun. Welcome, everybody, to Specters of a Broken Sun, Season 2 of the Stories of a Broken Sun actual play tabletop role-playing game podcast. This season, we are playing a group of uh, people, people, I'm going to say people, uh, who live in the sun, and they are all part of the crew of the Probable Cause, a big orb that makes its way through the hallways and vents of the sun, smuggling and uh, apparently doing lots of murders, as we learned last time. I'm Matt, or ARP. My pronouns are he and him. You can find me on Twitter at Ycaliber, and you can follow the show at Broken Sun RPG. We've also got merchandise available both on T Public and Redbubble. Lots of cool stuff there. Joining me today are Keekers. Hi, everyone. It's me, Keekers. I play... Oh, I am She Sledger. Sorry getting ahead of myself. I play the lovable but ineffective uh, corpse fiend cd and uh <laughs> okay oh, i don't boy. know that's that's how the media is painting them that's true that's fair yeah and i've also previously played the beef boy crate jones um you can find me on twitter at the space cat and various other websites under that same name um and i'm happy to have you all listening to us Marvelous. We are also joined by Velvet. Howdy folks, I'm Velvet, she, her, and I play the moral compass of the group, Augustus, who totally, absolutely did not commit any murders and just watched helplessly as uh, other people named Slim committed all the murders. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on the interwebs at OG Brown Sugar. <laughs> any other shows we can find you on these days? I know you're a busy person. Yes, actually, you can find both me and Arp actually on at flight risk pod in uh our subtitled project anarchy and quiz excellent adventure you can also find me on the morty's devil's pitch stream on the phantom roll booth marvelous and we are also joined today by michael blood howdy everyone i'm mike blood i say them uh, for the purposes of season two i play slip the peace-loving communist agitator who absolutely committed a ton of murder last session an absolute berserk blood fest it did definitely happen it was shocking, <laughs> but effective. You get, you got the job done. I sure did. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, and afterwards, you all attempted to relax and chill out uh, following the harrowing mission. And uh, it went, it happened uh, to an extent. Not a great extent, but, uh, you know, you're all alive and on the probable cause and the probable cause uh, it hasn't been blown up or exploded or anything, and uh, definitely nothing bad happened when all these clocks filled during the faction downtime that I finished running just uh, just a couple of days ago. So we've got a filled clock for Phoenix um, from last time that we'll be seeing the effects of soon, I'm sure. Uh, clock from Hull Patrol filled. Umbral Investigations filled their clock. Now let's see. Olympian Design and Coal Rain are getting close. The Junkyard filled a very cool clock that we might learn about today or next time. Larap Automated Design filled their clock to make their new uh, chassis products, which you all promptly stole. And then they started a new clock last time and did very well filling it halfway. The Vile Lance filled the clock. The Solar Workers Union is getting close. Human Resources is filled one is getting close on the other. Sodality of Preservation filled one of their clocks. The Resistance filled two clocks. And the Solar Free State is still struggling along with its clocks. Uh, as it turns out, they're not actually that efficient. Like most uh, fascist authoritarian regimes, they are not actually as efficient and effective as they like to pretend they are. Okay, and we've got... I was about yeah. to say something about uh, fake fruit stands but i don't know if you would technically characterize that as fascist as much that was more a burning books uh, could well be you know authoritarian and some other flavor as well 
Mm-hmm. We've also got Naomi's treasure hunt clock. Naomi is working at the behest of Augustus, tracking down strange technologies that are in some way relevant or related to the sad box. So once that fills up, hopefully she will find something interesting. Now, today, so I told you uh, we when we rolled entanglements last time, I said I was going to roll that over into something that would happen next session. So I just want you to know that I haven't forgotten that. That's still coming. Uh, in addition to that, we realized that we had been forgetting to do experience for the ship, for the crew. And so we did that just before starting the recording today. And uh, it sounds like the probable cause has leveled up. So yay. did you decide? Yay. Yay, just hands. Did you decide what you wanted from your level up? First and foremost, we agreed that we've upgraded from probable cause to repeat offender. <laughs> y- yes. That is true. We've uh, we've rebranded. Okay. And I was talking about getting some like cosmetic flair for Terry. I, I don't think that would really take up the experience that much. It's like, you know how when you level up, it's like you look stronger mm. or whatever, but it, it doesn't take up any of the experience. It's just a cosmetic thing. So all of, all of Terry's droids um, have villainous goatees now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm sure Which Terry would be into that. Hollow projected. <laughs> it's like that episode of Star Trek. Yep. I'm just assuming that exists because it's Star Trek. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They go into an alternate evil. Dimension. Oh, yeah. The mirror. The mirror. Dimension. Has a goatee. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> yeah, Which yeah, one is yeah, that? Because yeah. Riker already had the goatee. Evil Link. Oh, it's, I think it happens in every single series. They yeah, go to the but, mirror dimension. Actually, I guess they didn't go in Voyager. They were busy I, with I some other know. stuff. I've you mean Voyage seen... didn't voyage into the mirror dimension? No, they didn't go into the mirror dimension. All right. Uh, so for your special abilities, I believe some of you were looking at the getaway. Yeah, I was. I was pushing for the getaway because it seemed like something that we were going to do this session in particular. Hmm. You gain potency when you scramble or helm to avoid capture or run a blockade. When doing a delivery job, take plus 1d to the engagement roll. Okay. Uh, and is that something everybody wants? Or is it something else that you wanted yes. to have? Yes. If, if CD was here, CD would vote for that. What do you think, Augustus? I'm always down for a clean getaway. All right. We'll mark that down. All right. Good. So you'll probably need to remember that because I probably won't. I got you. Good. Okay. Like yep. every one of, sorry, every one of CD's problems has been, they have not been able to run away. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. All right. So today is CD returning to the probable cause or is Crate Jones still hanging out here? <laughs> oh boy. Well, is it possible that they're both? I mean, I would play cd today but we might hear a little bit from crate is what i'm saying okay it just how does how does cd make their return to the probable cause um i think that they somehow like just kind of break in without augustus or slip noticing that cd just somehow appears back in their room and has locked the door like terry's like oh yeah cd's back and they're in their room and they've locked the door <laughs> And it, it like it happens sometime when they were both like out doing something else or whatever, like literally Slip was gone for five minutes and then CD's there. Right. Because I imagine that Slip isn't gone from the ship as long as like Augustus would be. This is where I live. Yeah. It's CD's house. Or Slip's house, but yeah. Sorry, Slip's house. Also. CD has got... Another house, which is perhaps at this very moment being occupied by generators, <clears throat> Olympian interior designs, goons. All right. Um, did CD attempt to return to their home and find and find it, you know, cordoned off? And because CD is a, a wanted fugitive at this point. So presumably CD's house would be under surveillance at all times. Oh, no, CD would not have gone back to their house. It, it is. They have labeled it a lost cause at this point. That's fair. Um. CD is basically just like, okay, well, CD is going to be dead soon. <laughs> All right. Things that are in the news recently. Um, Hornet Squad has been making a lot of noise about a recent theft that they uh, suffered by uh, unknown hands. A number of their cool jet packs have been pilfered, and it's not entirely sure where uh, those have gone. In entirely unrelated news, vile lance, uh, pro-vile lance graffiti and advertisements have been appearing in uh, 
high up and hard to reach locations around the sun. I'm sure there's nothing connecting those two events. The Hull Patrol has started posting wanted ads, wanted posters, uh, featuring images of the probable cause around the sun as well. So there are posters and advertisements. Anytime you log into the sim, you get a little notification reminding you, hey, if you see this orb, contact the Hull Patrol. They're wanted criminals. Other interesting stuff is going on. Uh, Phoenix's Stocks have surged recently. They have been uh, all over the... They have not been... Sorry, I should say they themselves have not been in the news, but their stocks have been going up. More people are purchasing stock in Phoenix, and uh, the stock is becoming more and more expensive to get per share. What else? Olympian Interior Design is continuing the rollout of the Mandy Graham. Definitely CD's block will have been taken up by now. It's hard to say what will have happened to your possession CD, but hopefully that's something we can find out soon. Larup Automated Design is offering a bounty for anyone with any information about the recent uh, violent attack on its convoy. And because they are, they now owe a number of people who had pre ordered their ne- latest generation chassis, uh, their stocks have taken a hit, but they are still offering. Uh, significant bounty for any information on what happened to those chassis and who attacked their convoy. The Sodality of Preservation released a cryptic statement that nobody really understands, uh, reminding people about the taboo of messing with dead bodies without permission from human resources. Nobody's really sure why they said that, but it happened. There was a big news story about it. Human Resources is continuing to look for the missing bodies that disappeared, supposedly pilfered uh, or shunted somewhere by the nefarious murderer CD. The body fiend, as the newspaper is saying. (laughs) The body fiend. All right. Anything else going on here? There's a lot of rumbling uh, from on social media about Exodev attempting to unionize its employees. The leadership of Exodev is not into that, but it seems like there is some force that has been pushing and helping the uh, employees there work towards building a union. Okay, good. So, you have a couple of jobs available to you via the, you know, job net that Terry is able to offer you. One of the jobs is still, there is still a, you know, red urgent one from the resistance. They really need somebody to deliver this dangerous package for them. And, you know, there's, uh, they've added on dire warnings. They have increased the amount that they are willing to pay for it to eight red for that job with the resistance uh there is also a job floating around from the sodality of preservation if you want to work for them they are offering a job for six cred that uh is asking there aren't a lot of details it says it's looking for uh free agents to investigate um an appearance that is causing discomfort amongst the populace and that's about all it says investigate strange sightings that are causing discomfort amongst the populace those are the two available to you right now either the resistance or the sodality of preservation. The resistance job sounds like it's going to be extremely dangerous, but it's also very urgent and lucrative. The job with the sodality of preservation, not as lucrative, but still a good payday. Probably not as dangerous because it's investigation, but also you would be working for the sodality of preservation. What's the scene look like around the table in the core of Terry here today? Well, um, I have to say that CD has changed their look completely like they've somehow swapped out different parts of themselves Mm. so that they look like a different robot at least and and there it's still ongoing that this is happening um for example they like they're um they seem to be going kind of like a matte blue sort of uh design like there's a matte turquoise like hands that aren't as high quality as CDs like manipulator hands were before, but still pretty functional. Um, it is, uh, they don't necessarily have treads as much anymore. They've kind of moved, uh, but it's, it's still kind of a smooth thing. They've kind of like moved from the more, uh, Wally style build to a little bit more, um, R2D2 in a sense, like a round casing. I mean, there's a head still, 
But I mean, just imagine that the bottom half of it is more R two D two. If that makes any sense. No, I get it. It's a trash can with a jackal head. Yeah, they haven't changed the head yet. <laughs> but you could you can tell that they're working on it themselves. They're they're halfway through. Halfway there, living on a prayer. Um, all right, so you know, do a scene for me. C D has shown up with major cosmetic changes, now a wanted criminal. All of you have wanted post well, not of your faces, but of the probable cause. So it's CD's face and the probable cause that are the ones that have wanted posters everywhere. Um, what's going on? Slip is oscillating between looking up the newest reports, just constantly refreshing news reports about the probable cause and staring mm-hmm. at like the broken vending machine smiley face that passes for Slip's head is just oriented towards CD every now and then glitching as per usual. Mm. Is there something on my face? No, nope, not your face. Face is fine. Face is normal. Well, I do like this vintage uh, 70s robot style. I've always been a fan. Did you just have that somewhere? How did you transfer ex- your core out of the old chassis? Duct tape. Yep, yep. About what I expected. So I heard you met Crate. Nice guy, yeah. wasn't he? It sure was nice. Yeah. yeah, I think proximity to him wasn't really healthy for my whole murderous impulses. Been working on that. Had a little bit of a <clears throat> slip up. Slip. Is this like Augustus mm-hmm. chiming in at this point? I think they both say slip at the exact same time. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, just yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I go, uh, uh, totally happened. Yeah, yeah, it's flip. Oh, okay, yeah. Ha ha ha, flip up, flip my name, yeah. But yeah, Crate was nice. Don't know when he left or when you got back. That's fun. Oh yeah, Crate, Crate doesn't like goodbyes. He likes to just leave and I'm sure he'll be in contact with you. You've got his, uh, he, he probably left like some of his uh oh what are they called a grenade yeah he left a bunch inside a basketball it was really bizarre no 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 satchel folk info with you oh yeah the i had to download the app on my communicator and now we're friends <laughs> all i have is gum boy what's gum boy you didn't see gum boy plastered all over like on the back of his jacket yeah and the neck tattoo but i didn't what is that it's like one of the most popular satchel folk. Terry has one. And they gesture towards Terry's like main thing. Terry, you have satchel folk? Absolutely. It's a wonderful way to distract some of my subroutines every once in a while when we're driving around. <laughs> you, you, you I have play- 12 gumboys. You're playing satchel folk while we drive? I'm playing satchel folk go right now. Oh boy. Okay. Augustus, do you have satchel folk? I have a silver gum boy. Oh, of course you do. <laughs> I white knuckle my servos. I think Crate has a few of those, but like two. Uh, but don't feel bad. He's completely obsessed. Yeah, I got that. So how about the, you know, how'd you evade the Paw Patrol? Well, the thing is, what you've heard is not exactly true. Obviously, you both were there, and no, I did not murder that person. But I figure it's time that I came clean a little bit and said, yes, I was taking some body parts on the side to give to people in need. Did you murder anyone for the body parts, or? No, who the heck am I going to murder for these body parts? Who needs organic body They're parts already on the dead. Are you Are you giving organic body parts to the wealthy? Because they already have bodies. CD kind of looks at Augustus, kind of like, do I want them to know? There are some people out there who will pay a good amount of money. For human furniture? What are you doing? No, they're replacement parts, but for human bodies, obviously. But the only people with human bodies live in the core, right? Well, there would be you? people who yeah. have human body parts in outer layers as well. It's just rare, and they, you know... Require replacement oh, I see. frequently. Yeah. Would Slip know that, so, I guess, then? So never mind. Slip might, but also Slip's not super social, so maybe not. Super true. <laughs> yep, don't have a lot of friends. So, should we assume CD will say this? Uh, well, have you ever seen people out in the mid-tiers that don't have a lot of parts? There's, like, cyborgs or androids, whatever the term is. I don't even, I don't see people Cyborg. very Cyborgs, I think. Androids would be artificial. Correct. Sorry. Uh, what? There might be a, a few little... Oh, sorry. There might be a few little screws loose, as the saying goes, during the last transfer. I'll be fine when I boot up again. But anyway. You, you want me to check out the whole connection in there? I mean, you're the doctor, but... 
Um, sure. Yeah, all right. I'll just spider walk over there with my crab legs. <laughs> And start What's poking around noise? inside your, your chassis. What noise does Zoidberg make again? It's been so long. Whoop, 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 whoop. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. But that's but like that, but without a copyright strike. <laughs> okay. So like zoop, 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 zoop. there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Are you going to try to like um mind freak into Z- CD's mind a little? No, I just want to see if there's actual duct tape inside your chassis on your core. <laughs> I'm not going to try to dominate your program. No, it was more just like a psychic. Oh, so you just issued yourself and then attached the head after? No, I no CD actually bodily put it in, but I meant to slip. Ah, yeah. No, I, I, I actually wander over there on my hodgepodge body. No, no, I meant like once you got there closer, would it be possible to do uh, almost psychic message? I mean... If CD has psychic powers, sure, I assume. But if not, you could just stare at me, and that could be fun. So CD is staring at Slip, and I'll try to uh, roll here to, I guess, attune to Slip to just kind of give them some sort of weird psychic message. Okay. I think you're in a controlled situation, and this will likely have a limited effect, as you are not a psychic, but uh, you know that Slip is, in a way. Oh my gosh! Wow. The one time CD does well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Rolls are looking up. Okay. I think uh, so your message goes through to slip, but uh, it also goes through to Augustus, but you don't know that last part. Oh, crap. So um, CD like messages to slip this picture of this stately these bodies being hand like a body piece being handed over the leg particularly over to the people at the junkyard and it kind of echoes the person's voice about how operative an operative needed it but there is some because i guess cd isn't very um skilled at this sort of thing them not being psychic but trying to like send this signal out unfortunately there is a little bit more and there is kind of like this horror of that is communicated this horror of a father at one point being severed from his family in in a natural way that you can tell really does not sit well with CD. So they get a peek at the uh, psychic echoes that CD mm-hmm. was subject to during their zero session. Yes, but it's partly just because of the fact that those two events are so tied around each other. Mm. The handing over of that leg, like, I can't hand this, I can't you know, give this to, to them. This is something sacred and, you know, those feelings. Right. So, like, see these, like, eyes, like, open and shut, and then they turn back, and they're like, so, is there anything wrong? No, I think I'm, like, slip taps their uh, monitor. I think I'm a little frazzled from the other day. I, I'm starting to see things again. Maybe I'm picking up. Terry, are you watching a movie? I'm always watching a movie. What you got on? Uh, let me check. Terry looks back into their systems. Currently, I'm watching eight different movies. Do you want me to list all of them? Just the ones with, like, families in them. I'm not watching any movies with families in them. All right. So who projected that into my mind? Someone projected a family into your mind? Yeah, I think so. Or I'm really losing it. Fascinating. And see these kind of like, didn't he see my hands? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I, can you do, is that a thing you can do, CD? The, did you know that, Augustus? BT phones home. It's happened once or twice. Well, don't start quoting the classics at me. I don't. How's cool Augustus on? feeling, having had that psychic leakage as well? Interested at the business opportunity of uh, providing that much needed service. And a little bit relieved that CD actually isn't, like, chopping people up for parts. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> Wasn't sure about that. <laughs> you never know. Well, I figure that CD knows where Slip's uh, loyalties lie, hence the way they thought they could trust them with it. Well, uh, that's a thing that we all know now. Um, why does the junkyard want body parts on the low? I told you that people want them. Right. Okay. Well, that's going to be something I think about for the rest of the day. I guess I have to start looking at more people. Uh, I don't know if CD 
would necessarily remember, but that job was uh, the part was needed for a deep cover operative who works for the resistance. No, CD would know that, but I don't know exactly how much they'd want to say that because obviously Augustus is still right there. Okay, just want to make sure that we all remember that detail out of character. Yes, I remember very clearly. Now, if the three of you are done playing psychic footsie, I do have those two job offers I'd like to run by you. Oh, right, yeah. Terry, I don't even have feet. I forgot we were looking at that. Well, you used to. Uh, Psychically, you do. Exactly. (laughs) All right, Terry. Okay, why don't you bring them up on the hollow display there, you old camp. Uh, Terry does so, and you can see the two jobs that uh, I previously described. You've got the urgent delivery job that's now at eight credits, uh, priority red from the resistance, and you have the job investigating strange sightings that are causing unrest in the populace at six credits from the Sodality of Preservation. In case there's uh, any, anyone needs a reminder, the Sodality of Preservation is a military department that handles the storage, transfer, and manipulation of memories, whereas the Resistance is a group of scofflaws and ne'er-do-wells who do everything in their power to oppose the Solar Free State and almost all of their policies. They've been operating in secret since shortly after the sun invaded the station, but they are sort of an open secret. Well, I don't really have to think about it. I vote for the resistance. Yeah, that's not really much of a choice on my part either. Turn towards Augustus. The pay is good. Yeah, Augustus and Terry both get a vote. Obviously. And if we want a tiebreaker, we could always ask uh, Gumboy Boy himself. He coming? No. Okay, okay. It's for. I think it's for the best. He, he, um, would, he would just be the tiebreaker. Does Augustus have a vote? What does Augustus' oh. vote? The resistance. The pay is good. Okay. Very well, then. Now, we do have that truck in storage that Augustus procured. It should last long enough to help us with this mission, at least the transponder. Though, do you want me to come along on this one? Or would you rather do this with uh, that vehicle? Yeah, I'm going to go take a look at that. You guys got a truck? It is technically a truck. (laughs) Come look at it. Put your head back on and... Come over here. CD stops like, well, finishes to a point of where they wouldn't completely fall apart and follow slip. Go through into like the cargo hold, I guess, area of the probable cause. And there you go. That's our that's our valiant steed right there. Oh, that thing doesn't even have four wheels. No, it's only got three and a half, which is astounding. It's got three wheels and then there's a spare on the back. (laughs) The spare is deflated. As I said. I think um, this truck, we said it had it had credentials like someone had it had clearly been mothballed or put in a junkyard and somebody pulled it out and they forgot to to decommission its access codes. So it still does have, I believe it was human resources access codes. I think that's what I said. Uh, uh, was it human resources or like home maintenance? Hmm. I believe we said it was maintenance. Is there a maintenance faction? I guess there's the Barnacle Brigade, but they're not really official. Yeah, uh, we love love them. <laughs> It's some type of it's some type of official like um, military government vehicle. So maybe it's a like yeah. a whole patrol custodian truck. truck. Could be. You, you can be. tell because there's like a couple of mops and brooms in the back. Oh, it's Very old, old, old. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's what you got. All right, we can so, fit in it. That helps. Yeah, the three of you can fit into it. It's it's enough of a truck for that. Now, I could take you close to the initial rendezvous and drop you off there if you wish, uh, or we could transport it inside of my hold until you get closer to the destination point. You will need to deliver this package into the core of the sun. Oh, right. That little chestnut. We have to bring it into the core where all the body uh, people are. Absolutely. Hmm? The embodied people in the core. Yeah. Exactly. I don't do too well around... Atmosphere? Yeah. I tend to start to zap thing. I'm not put together right. Do you need me to take a look at something uh, misfunctioning on your chassis? I mean, there's the whole, you know, part of me's broken right now because of what went down in the... I guess it was a desert? But I'm just generally this way. Uh, what do we know about the um, the package itself? Anything? I have the dimensions of the package, and uh, it is marked as fragile. 
do not drop. How big is it? Um, so Terry projects what looks like it's it's just a big box, but it's a very big box. Uh, it looks like it's maybe the size of a car. So the box could fit into the back of this truck, but it would uh, it'd be a tight squeeze, and uh, someone might have to hang on to the side while you were driving around with it. It's a large box. It's a big package. I call being under the truck. Yeah, I, the last time I was under a truck, nothing good happened. Just a few days ago. Yeah, I haven't slept in a long time. Um, okay, where's the initial pickup, Terry? The initial pickup is at a resistance rendezvous point right here. And uh, Terry puts up a map of the layers, and you can see that the initial pickup point is in the mid layers. So you'd have to take it from the mid layers through the inner layers and then into the core. And there's a delivery point as well. Are we delivering this to a contact we've had before or just a dead drop? <laughs> You'll be delivering it to a safe house in the core. A safe house is a resistance asset. I've been informed that very shortly after you make the drop, the safe house will be folded up and destroyed just in case you were deciding to try and sell that information. That's fair. Well, and was this a priority sent directly to us, or was this on a broad spectrum for all resistance operatives? There aren't that many resistance operatives who quite specialize in what the three of you do, but uh, you are not the only group that has been contacted with this opportunity. But if you take it, you will be the first group to respond to it. Mm, Most pretty. groups are not willing to risk going into the core. It's pretty hard to walk around in this box. Especially if it's a physical drop, it's not like we're uploading files. Actually, I might have to make a call if we're going to the core. CD says and starts stroking an imaginary beard. And who's that, if you don't mind my asking? Confidential. Right. Doctor client privilege or something more illicit? Or is that confidential? No, it's not any of that. Neither box. Alrighty. Also, if you look at the projection of the box, you can see that it has the markings of the human resources department on it. Whether that means what's inside is from human resources or it's just an HR box, tough to say. Is that typical design for retrievals from the surface of the station? Is it? <laughs> well, no. I would know that. It's not typical for that. It is not typical at all. Is it bigger than usual? It'll be a larger than usual box, yeah. Yeah, it's... Bigger than usual, yep. I'm guessing, and, and this is just a guess, that they were able to arrange some more bodies for uh, any resistance operatives they have in there. What do you mean more bodies? Like, you're telling me people body swap? I mean, people lose a body working for the resistance and need a new one. Okay. That's what I figure. Could it be weapons, maybe? Finally an armed attack in the core by physical operatives? I'm just spitballing here. I have no idea. I guess we'll have a better idea. Oh, that would be it. fun. That would be fun. That would That's, be fun. You know, yeah. What I'm hoping for. There's a couple of people in the car I'd like to take a shot at. Uh. <laughs> what about you, Augustus? Anyone you want to kill? <laughs> <laughs> what a question. <laughs> <laughs> Turn my chipper vending machine face toward you. You, you know, I, uh, I think I'm the only one in the party that's uh, not one for murder, but you know, there's a couple of people in the core that could stand to be removed. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, by spacing them. No dirty hands. Wouldn't want that. Am I right? Or just people you would be really happy if someone else got rid of. Points at me. No nah. one was scratching. Right. Well, okay. I can tell I can tell you one of the people at the top of my list right now is people that made Mandy Mini. Whiskey tank. Oh, yeah. Olympian <laughs> Interior is really doing a lot of messed up stuff. You're not a fan of Jennifer Trafire? Oh, no. Yeah, that's your name. Thanks, Terry. Going on the list. I fully support you taking out all the heads in the core. Yep. Perfect for a hostile takeover. Now, if you're going to take this job, you should probably go and meet with them to pick up the box. Yeah, let's... Or, you know, do you want me to come with you to that meeting point? I... I'm just very worried about this truck. I don't believe it's safe. I think the truck might be useful for a distraction. If How about you come with us with one of your bodies? Uh, you know, my bodies are strong, but I don't know if just one of them could carry that whole box for you. Good point. It looks heavy. Why don't we err on the side of caution, and I'll see if I can generate a, a maybe a fake read for us for a moment while we travel through the mid-layer. 
Very well. Shall I begin driving in there? Please do. All right. There's a slight hiss and creak as the probable cause begins moving, and uh, some screens pop up showing the exterior as usual as the probable cause zooms along a, you know, some disused tunnel or sewer or other, because most people here aren't using the sewers, but you are. Except as a means of locomotion as they were intended. Indeed. So you're traveling through the empty sewers towards the uh, midpoint to pick up your package. You arrive at the rendezvous point and they scan you in and you meet with someone there who is going to give you a package. And that person is just a moment while I get my my fingers list where did my list go no okay i may need more than one moment here that's fine you're entitled to several moments if you so choose partner (laughs) all right that's who it is oh boy okay okay the contact you meet with is someone you might recognize because they are a well-known ish actor oh no yes Uh, and this well-known actor goes by the nom de guerre extreme king uh, Extreme King primarily makes romantic comedies. Uh, he is a leading man in general. Lots of romantic comedies, primarily with a polyamorous bent. So, uh, you know, usually about a group of people coming to terms with uh, their polyamory and learning to be together as a polycule and so on. His most famous movie series is you know, about a group of uh, five people who learn how to become a, a polycule together. To uh, quote my father. They learn to care. They learn to care. Learn to care and learn to communicate. Learn how to make things work. So that's Extreme King. Uh, CD like pulls a uh, autograph book out. You still have a physical one? That's amazing. Uh, Extreme King is in a human body. So uh. when you meet with, yeah, you meet with him in the mid here. He's in a human body. He is very traditionally handsome. He's like a, a Kurt Russell type. I want to say. Oh. Oh my. Yeah, a young Kurt Russell uh, type. Well, not young, maybe like in his 30s, Kurt Russell. But like a if Pliskin, if, maybe. If he's inhabiting a uh, station body, though, just to. The body that he has is pretty light skinned, whether that is because it is an older model body or it's been genetically modified or cosmetically modified to look more light skinned. Difficult to say, but he does have that uh, sort of a pale skinned look to him and a Kurt Russell vibe going on with the the long hair, a uh, bit of a beard as well. He's wearing a flannel shirt and khakis with combat boots. Quite the apparel dissonance, but you are a man that lives on the edge. Uh, so seeing you with your autograph book, uh, just a moment here. I loved you as playing Nebula Kid's father. No, it was Nebula Duke. Always a pleasure to meet a fan, Stream King says. And uh, he does a flick of his wrist, and suddenly there's a Sharpie there. And he pops off the cap and uh, scribbles an autograph into your autograph book. Now, let's get down to business. I believe you're here for the job. Transport this big old box into the core? Yeah. Okay. You're going to be loading it onto that thing? That is the plan. Okay. Yep. You know this is a dangerous one, right? I understand it's probably the most dangerous job that we're ever going to do. Well. Well, I don't know about that. So far, based on what we've seen of your records. Oh, you are keeping tabs. I appreciate that. We like to make sure that our various assets are keeping busy in a good way. Well, that's been me lately. No doubt. Yes, I've seen. Why did you kill that guy? Oh, I didn't. I was framed. That is actually true. Well, if you say so. I'm not the one to uh, do any investigations. I'm face, you know, a contact, a point man. Oh, you were good in Point Man. I, I like that. Thank you. It was an older film, not as popular, but I did get a lot of exercise for that role. Not everyone is as good as pointing as I am. True. He oh, points wow. with two fingers. He, he did double it. Finger guns. Yep, he did it. Oh, All right. wow. I'm going to go grab the box now. Just like the poster of Point Man. I'm just going to wheel over there. Just yes, Dee Dee starts fanning themselves wow. with the autograph book. <laughs> okay, so the uh, a couple of drones come out and they are carting the big old box and you can see it's got a couple of dents in it and um otherwise it appears to be in good condition there's no rust it's been recently cleaned or scrubbed or polished uh it does have the uh, hr branding on it 
and these drones start um, rolling it up the ramp into probable cause. So I have a question. Can can CD do a scan to see if it has body parts in it? Um, like, do you want bodies? to do this right now in front of the employer? Ix- oh, no. Ixnay on the Anske. Hmm? You can, but you can see that CD is like really uh, interested. Mm. We'll have time to talk about tea later. It's very important that you don't open this box, Extreme King says. If you open the box, the contents will be irreparably damaged before they reach the core. That sounds terrible. I would not want that to happen. Yeah, because obviously you won't be paid if that happens. That does make sense. Yeah, so uh, we got some things for someone to embody there, CD says. Winking multiple times. This is above even my pay grade. Oh my. All right. Does it go all the way to the top out of curiosity? You don't have to answer. I wouldn't know. Okay. I just know they told me to come here, meet the agents, and give them the box and the instructions. All now, right. I've got a beacon here, and he uh, holds out. It's just a little disc. You would recognize it as a type of signaling beacon. Activate this five minutes before you arrive at the safe house. This is how our contacts on the other end will know that you're arriving, and they'll be prepared to offload as soon as you arrive. It's got to be five minutes before, though. They need that time to reach the safe house. Okay. What are we looking at with heat? Who knows about this? Right now, you, a couple of other small outfits, and as far as we know, that's it. Human Resources doesn't know that some of their meat is missing? This is just a box. A container. All right. It makes it look a little bit more legitimate, but uh, you know, it's not going to stand up to close inspection. This Got is it. standard equipment. Now, uh, this is your map, the key, if you will. And he hands over a physical, like a, it's like a pad, like a tablet is the word I'm looking for. Once you cross the barrier into the core, this will give you the address of the safe house. It will not give you any address until that point. So once you cross the barrier into the core, excuse me, the dog's barking. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. So fluffy. Oh, he's got the little ball at the end of the tail. It's so cute. He is, in fact, a poodle. That is true. Tell him the truth. Yes. Who's a poodle? Who's a poodle? You're a poodle. Just giving me a look. Like, what? Ah, what do you want? <laughs> How dare you touch me? I'm a poodle. Chill out, chill out. me. He is an ocean of calm right now in a sea of troubles. <laughs> okay, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, who are those people? Are you okay? in danger? Okay. That, that girl has a cat behind her. <laughs> so, as soon as you cross the border into the core, this pad will activate and it will give you the exact address of the safe house. You understand? So make sure you keep it with you. Sounds good. Is there anything else you need from me? Can you just uh, say that line, point man, again? Sure, he says. And he turns briefly away and passes a hand over his face. He gets a very serious expression and says, I know you wanted me to say that I love you. But at the end of the day, knowing that I love you is the point. (sighs) Oh, boy. And CD starts clapping like, I can't clap. The old is still there. Wow. All right. Well, I got to go. I'm supposed to be at a charity thing. Yeah, I got to go, too. All right, lovely meeting you. My pleasure. Don't die. Don't plan on it. That's Can't plan. die, yep. actually. <laughs> he turns and uh, heads back into the doorway in the side of the, uh, the side of the sewers there and, and uh, vanishes up the stairs. You've been left alone with your cargo. That was lucid. What a bizarre day. <laughs> okay, so CD wants to scan to see if their body parts are any living organic matter in, in this box. All right. Terry, you want to get us a safe distance away from this place, please? I'm on it. Terry and, begins uh, rolling. I'll start plotting a course. Do I roll study? Let's see. Yeah, sure. You can roll study. You're in a risky situation here because you don't know what safeguards are on this box. And again, you don't know what's in it. So scanning it or studying it might cause some issues if you're if you're not too careful. So risky standard? Sounds about right to me. That's us. Whoa! Hey. <laughs> but the calm explodes. That's a five. The dice, the dice lords five. are so kind to me tonight. Oh, you shouldn't have mentioned it. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're right. Okay, uh, so you are able to scan the box, and the box appears to have several layers of security on it. So in your scanning, you fortunately don't touch off any of the layers of security. You do 
find that there is possibly some organic material in this box, but it's difficult to tell because there's a lot of interference. Some of the layers of security are scramblers and things that throw out like basically white noise to throw off scans just like this. Okay. You get the idea that there might be some type of life support in this box. So there might be bodies in here. There might not be. These could be false readings. It's hard to tell. I mean, it, it, it could be it to different extents. Like you only need so much life support for different parts as it were like you would need a lot more life support for a full body whereas you would need less for just some organs All right what's that uh scan Oop, sorry. No, I'm, I'm just gonna take a clock here as a consequence of that okay perfect because i it's did gonna, not get a six it's gonna brick the box and we're gonna lose all our money yeah, so there's probably something in li- alive in there. I don't know. Let's get going. All right. Is it typical that when you make these body drop-offs that the parts are being kept alive? Yeah, I assume. Well, yeah, I have, uh, I, well, I used to have a cooler in my old chassis for parts. Did you know about this, Augustus? No, I wish I still didn't. All right. Well, okay. CD still hasn't told them about the whole uh, crematory they have either. <laughs> And I ain't going to ask. <laughs> All right. So you're driving along through the mid systems. And how are you going to make the transition into the inner system, inner layers without being caught? What's your plan for that? Deception or infiltration are mystical. I don't know, but it's physical. I don't know if I can do anything with that. Yeah. So we've got to, well, all right, so basically you we're going to start the job preparation at this point. You've got the cargo. You know where it's going. You know the, the, the target and all that. So the question at this point is, what does each of you want to do to prepare for this job? You spend time planning each job. Uh, you stand in the ship's galley and review flickering hollow displays of terrain, look at stolen schematics, whisper plots and schemes, bicker about the best approach, lament the dangers ahead and lust after the cred, but you, the players, don't have to do all the nitty-gritty planning. The characters take care of that off screen. All you have to do is choose what type of plan the characters have already made. No need to sweat all the little details and try to cover every eventuality ahead of time because the engagement role ultimately determines how much trouble you're in when the plan is put in motion. So you can do stuff like gather information, call up a contact or something along those lines, and then determine whether you want to do an assault, deception, infiltration, mystic, social, or transport. I will call a contact. Who are you calling and what do you want? I call Araxis. Okay. And I want to call in that favor. Okay. So remind us who Araxis is while we're doing this. That, that was the poor so-and-so who I, who I what freed from a consciousness cage. And with my, my trusty sidekick, Yolo Swaggins, as we stealthily yes, and heroically evaded Whiskey Tango for the upteeth time, destroying many of his personal favorite pet drones and causing <laughs> him no small amount of shame. Okay. Uh, so you, I guess you have Araxi's, uh contact information. You give him a call. Set up a very secure channel. <laughs> Hi, Slip. Yeah. Hi, Araxis. Wasn't expecting to hear from you. Wasn't expecting to call so soon. We're... Well, what's up? We're on that job the Resistance put out. The Priority Red. Oh. I just, I've got a bad feeling, and... Yeah, I mean, it's Priority Red. I know, I've only seen one of those before, but... Do you have any general hubbub? You got your ear to the ground about this. What are we walking into when we hit the core? How deep are we in? All right. So it sounds like you want to gather some information here. I think so. All right. What kind of action do you feel that you're doing here? I mean, it could be consort because we are acquaintances, but it also could be sway because I am trying to weasel information out that he might not want to give. What do you feel is more the approach that you're going with here? I think we're consorting because I do... Think that we're actually friends okay i'm just gonna put araxes on your character sheet as a as a contact my buddy yeah okay so uh do do, 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 do a do you gather information so that's a fortune roll using your uh consort and he owes you a favor for rescuing him and saving him from a consciousness cage so you can add an extra die to that roll okay so that's two dice yes okie dokie that's a okay. uh, snake eyes times two yeah, you got yourself a two there, uh, two twos. But for a gather information role, that just means that the information you get is limited. So remind us, what was the question that you asked there? What are we walking into? What's the general hubbub? How deep are we in? Okay. Well, uh, I know your your ship is wanted, and at least one of your cohorts is. I don't know if they're with you or not, but don't tell me. 
Um, so there's going to be, you know, Hell Patrol is going to be looking for you. Thetacom probably will be uh, on some of the borders. They do border patrol pretty often. And I know that the Hornet squad is real jumped up lately, and they have been seen flying around uh, the border between the mid and inner layers doing really more thorough checks than usual because they're trying to find their lost jetpacks. So that's the that's the lay of the land. I haven't been to the core recently, but uh, last I was there, the checkpoints on the borders were all very heavily trolled. And, you know, it's like a fortress trying to get in there. If you don't have papers or a corresponder, a transponder code, you might be out of luck. Okay, we have a fake. Well, it's real, but it's old. Transponder for a maintenance truck for Hull Patrol, maybe even a century or two old. Hey, that might work. Every Sorry. little bit. Sorry, I can't be much more help than that. All right, difficult question. Yeah. Hey, uh, you're you're going to be okay, right? I think so. I'll give you a call. Okay. Thanks, Araxes. Hey, anytime, as long as it uh, doesn't end up with me back in a consciousness cage. I won't let that happen to you ever again. Thanks. I think we'll end that one there. So you got some information there. Um... With that information, I would think that we might have the the stuff for the truck, but we'd probably be, uh, it would be prudent to also get papers that would be more updated um, so that we can sneak in and, or come in and be more acceptable. Because if you have two things saying, oh, it's okay that we come in here, that's better than just one. Yeah. So is that something CD would want to try and do, or is that something someone else might be more suited to? I, is is that someone that uh, is that someone or our contact or something that you think would be better for Augustus Velvet? Or oops, sorry. Would that you're be looking new some, You're going to get forged documents, right? Good just, forged documents. Could just declare that. Surely, entirely possible. Yeah, have to make them good. Excellent, one might say. Mm-hmm. You can declare them, but if you want forged documents that are going to be good enough to get you through the checkpoints at the core, that would probably be a pretty high-stress flashback when you declare it in the middle of a mission. So it uh, might be a good idea to do that now if you want to. I mean, I could probably get those. Okay. So where are you going to contact to get those? Or where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Would the junkyard have them, or would I have to go to a more upscale place? Uh, the junkyard is not, they wouldn't be able to get into the core themselves. They might know a guy who knows a guy, but uh, it might be easier for you to go and scam them off somebody or uh, do a, a lie somewhere or get in touch with one of your more hoity-toity friends. Go and do a lie. Yeah, I'll, I'll go do a lie. You know, like a liar. <laughs> do a sway, I guess. I just got to figure out who I would be lying to. No, well, you can make someone up. You could go to a place and see who's at the place. You could case a joint. Yawn, make yawnster. No, I'll do what I did last time. I'll, I'll, I'll try to locate some like, you know, young hoity-toity initial, like, you know, like a VP. Okay. I mean, you could theoretically call up Devra again. Would it be possible to like refer someone to someone we know? In what way? Like, I could say like, oh, this I know a body dealer, so. They probably know about forging documents. Yeah. Would it be possible for me to be like, hey, Augustus, I know this person. Talk to them. You can do that. You can also just talk to that person if you have a contact that forges documents. Do you well, have a contact I, that forges documents? I have, a, I have one that's a body dealer. Right. I mean, we could argue that my former patient forges documents, but that, that would be kind of silly. Or gaming, metagaming too much. Hmm. And CD, you're also very wanted right now. So yeah, yeah. People may not be as willing to give you illegal papers. They aren't very close to you. No. Nope. I mean, I could still see the contact on their behalf or something like that. Because I think I'll save, I'll save Deborah just in case this kind of goes bad. Okay. Now you know a dock master, uh, and you know a tow truck captain. Oh yeah, in our ship contacts. Oh yeah, I'll talk to the tow guy. And there's a diplomat. Um, Ooh. but XL is not happy with you yeah but i think that a dock master if they dock then they would deal with transport between places yeah aol would absolutely have access to that type of stuff good old aol Mm -hmm. cd has like 20 of their personal discs that they made first 10 hours of storage free yeah that sort of thing Mm -hmm. oddly enough that's one of the things that was in the shipboard (laughs) So I'm, I'm sure there's like another 15 that 
the Mandy Mini people are just like, what the heck is this? Who still uses these? In throwing it away. <laughs> so in total, that means like CD has 35 AOL. <laughs> At least. So I guess this, uh, are you going to meet up with AOL or call AOL or what do you want to do? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll meet AOL. Okay. So you'll need to meet AOL somewhere here in the mid while in this area, I assume. Also, uh, this is where their headquarters are in the mids. So where do you meet up with AOL? Whatever the, the local dock pub is. Okay. The Shack of Crabs. The Shack of Crabs. Oh. Spelled S-H-A-Q. So I wanted to ask, uh, in my little like repertoire of gadgets, I have a legitimate ID. Is that like a, my ID? Or can I use that ID in disguise? That I I think that's your legitimate ID. Like part of your role as speaker is that you are legitimately a part of the upper crust. So your legitimate ID is what lets you okay. get into these places. Okay, figure it out. Uh, Kiker, is, is AOL pretty tight with CD? I, I'm not certain, but I'm sure that they've met since CD has been transferring this stuff before. They've probably had to talk to a uh, doc master, but I think that there are why you can I, go I, was gonna, I was going to go. Um, no, I was going to go like the angle of a made up private eye trying to clear your name. And I was like, well, if they like you, maybe they'll be amenable to helping you out. But I mean, if you're not like particularly if it was just like a business type thing, I might just blackmail them into being like, hey, you smuggled their bodies. Pepperidge Farm remembers if you don't want Pepperidge Farm spilling the beans. Maybe cough up some paper. Well, AOL <laughs> is a dock master and is a friend of the crew as a whole. Okay. Yeah. AOL is a crew contact. So you all know AOL. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha. AOL, okay. the, the precocious camp. All right. So I'll lean on that. I don't have to make up any more characters. Okay. So you're at the Shack of Crabs, which uh, it has for its sign just a very tall crab. And uh, you go inside. I, I can't stand you. <laughs> uh, you go inside there are you going i guess it would be a bad idea to take cd out in public right now uh is yes. going with you or with this as cds disguise they wear a trench coat and a fedora <laughs> <laughs> but on a robot body a baseball cap and sunglasses yeah no cd is the back at the ship playing satchel folk with terry hmm. Being yeah, captain satchel folk the solo venture okay Okay, AOL is in a uh, in a booth in the back. Are we in the sim or is this in the the real? You know, we'll stick to the real. Okay, uh, AOL has a mostly human body. AOL's got uh, like a one of those metal implants over like half the face with a robotic eye. Um, both or AOL's left arm is like a crane, though it's not human. The right arm is a human arm, and the crane has like a brace support. Uh, into a largely robotic body and legs as well. So the human bits are like part of the head and some of the chest and the right arm. Okay, so we're basically saying that AOL is Long John Silver in Disney's animated Treasure Planet. Is that what they look like? Yeah, he's definitely oh, yeah, got absolutely. a robot arm and leg. Yeah, but not a, not a robot oh, yeah, body. Yeah. yeah, it's sort of, it's sort of like that. It's close enough. It's close. Yeah, no, you're right. The arm is like more more of a an actual crane though but it probably transforms into hands like that this is what i'm going to be picturing <laughs> oh gosh if there's something to be said about that movie even though it didn't do well is that they had some great character design it's a good movie it was oh, a it was, fantastic movie it, it was good and it is sadly forgotten and it should be one of the movies that they actually remake because it needs more appreciation maybe had a good cast too i think okay we're off topic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. This is a <laughs> this is a nostalgia podcast. Yes, yeah, this is a, it really is. This is specifically a Treasure Planet appreciation podcast now. Don't you Sorry get me you started. Were, this is terrible. I, don't get right right now. I have the one song from that on my iPhone. Uh, the I'm still here. It's a oh, great song. I'm sad now. Yeah. Okay. Good. So uh, AOL. Looks up as you sit down. Pirate voice. Pirate. So, sorry. Says, oh, hello, Augustus. <laughs> it's nice to see you. How can I help you today? AOL, it's been a while since I've dialed you up. 
you might have heard about uh, C Diesel Ventures, and though they're a bit odd, I can assure you that I'm about 85% sure they haven't killed anyone. But with them on the lam, we're having a bit of a tough time getting operations going, shortage of staff, you know how it is. But we're going to embark on a job. It's fairly lucrative. We're maybe hoping to put some of those creds towards the these legal defense. Uh, the problem is this requires us to, you know, drill a little deeper than we usually do to the core specifically. And we find ourselves in need of some official paperwork to expedite the, the job. You want to access the core? Yes, dear. That sounds dangerous and foolhardy. It sounds strange. But money. I understand. Well, getting mixed up in counterfeit core passes could be very bad for my business. What do I get out of this? Well, on top of our continued consultations, assistance, general friendship, we will also put you forward as a very highly recommended and discreet operative within similar circles. I see. Well, that is an interesting proposition. I think it's time for you to make a roll. What kind of action do you feel Mm -hmm. this is? Uh, I'm swaying. I'm not not rocking their boat. I'm just going to sway it. Okay. So let's make a fortune roll with your sway rating of two dice. And hopefully it will be a better one. What do you mean? Not bad. Perfect. Okay. Four and a three. Yeah, you got a four there. All right. Very well. I believe that I have the papers you're looking for. Once you return to your ship, you will find that You've got mail, and in that, there will be the papers that you require. I expect to be compensated for this with your recommendation to our mutual powerful friends. I'm so glad that we got that fortune roll good, so you could say that. I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) My soul hurts. Of course, (laughs) AOL. You scratch my bar, guys. Scratch the barnacles off your hole. (laughs) Very well done. Yeah, I think you two chat for a little while longer. And uh, I'm just going to you know, take a clock here while oh, you've been spending that time. I get it. Okay. So that clock's up to, well, you'll find out. Yep. Sure will. I'm sure so you've fine. got some papers that will hopefully help you get through the core gates. Uh, in addition to the mostly legitimate transponder on the quote unquote truck. Is there anything else any of you would like to do in preparation for this before we settle on the type of mission, pick our load and roll engagement? Terry, do you know if the... The, the borders between the mid and the core have that sort of simulation drag effect we were experiencing with the caravan? Not generally, but it's entirely possible they've installed them since the last time I was there. I don't always have access to that type of information. Hmm. Because if they do, I can really make that transponder legitimate. Hmm. Oh, well. It's banking on a lot. All right, are we ready to do our engagement stuff? I think so. I can't think uh, of anything else to do. Yeah, I mean... CD would have to do it, and I I don't know what else I don't okay. know what else they would do. So, uh, what type of operation are you planning to do? Assault, deception, infiltration, mystic, social, or transport? I guess it's just a straight transport. Yeah. Or, else, or else it's deception, saying, "Oh, we're we're bringing this in, and we're totally legit." It might be deception as part of your transport mission. I think for a transport, you need the detail of the route and the means, and you've got that in theory. So I guess transport. I think so. Transport of five, feet ring, Jason Statham. Yep. Okay. So for the route, um, I guess the detail I still need for the route is how you plan to get um, from mid through inner, because you know that the uh, We're being uh, the Hornet squad is out in force. And Hall Patrol is looking for you. Terry, do we have any s- schematics about the the underground leading up to the core wall? Maybe we can pop out where it's more convenient instead of just tri- bouncing around in public. I'll see what I can access. Those are highly classified, but we might be able to find something that fell off an E-truck, as it were. I think I might be able to help you dig a little harder. All right. So we'll count that as our detail. And the means, you have the transponder in the truck and the papers from AOL, the dock master. All right. Item loadouts. What loadout do you plan to have for this mission? Normal? Specifically for the part where you are going from the inner into the core, I think, going through that checkpoint. Light or normal? Hmm. I think we might have to go light just for believability. Hmm. You don't all have to take the same load either. That is awesome. CD is going to go with 
with normal as looking like some sort of Because we have, like, a maintenance truck, so they're going to look like a maintenance person. Okay, so that's the goal, is you want to look like a maintenance person? Yes. Okay. Uh, So with with that load, um, it'll be a little trickier to be sneaky, basically, is how that works. Yeah, I'll be taking light, just in case. I'm taking light, too. Okay. Maybe you want to put CD, like, in the back of the truck or something. Yeah. (laughs) Throw a tarp over them. (laughs) You're a gonk droid. This time around. Let's get strained. (laughs) CD is clearly the one with all the cleaning gear. I just uh, checked for normal repair tools. Would that count as some sort of disguise? (laughs) Like, I'm clearly here to repair something if they found, you know. Uh, If you, if it comes to that and you need to declare repair tools as part of a deception, that would probably improve your position or effect. Okay, we will. I will keep. You don't that. need to declare those now yet. All right. So, can I just say something? Absolutely. One thing I don't get about my character sheet is that illicit drugs are listed as having no load. Oh yeah, but, man. But candy and treats are listed as having a load. And I'm like, mm. see, the thing is, candy tends to take up more space than the there amount of illicit drugs that that would cover. I think. I don't know, like a candy bar versus like the drugs and the paraphernalia that you need. I don't know if it's necessarily drug that re- drugs that require that level of paraphernalia. Like it would be more like some pills or some slips of a thing. Okay, but also syringes and applicators are listed as having no load, and that's more bulky. Yeah, I'm it just, is more bulky. I'm just wondering why I, candy and treats have to have a load. It's probably because this is a game about criminals. (laughs) We're we're very good at hiding drugs and hypodermic needles on our body. But ask me to hold a candy bar and I don't know where to put that. (laughs) I know, but (laughs) think about it. It's like, what if you want to take candy from a baby? Well, we're not playing like Michael Blood's (laughs) real life. We're hiding candy bars on, like on your person is a normal thing that you do all the time. We're playing scum and villainy where hiding drugs is the name of the game we need a shirt that says two kinds of people because the whole time sitting here like oh you're like why are you complaining that you don't have carry weight on your drugs <laughs> <laughs> those who want to get two types of people in this world people who want to no carry load food. for their drugs and people who complain <laughs> no, not on no load, load for their candy for my candy <laughs> And since we talked about it so much, you better mark off that candy. You have that now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Engagement roll. It, yep, it's just like this it. gigantic <laughs> lollipop. I'm just imagining that if it's going to take a load, it's going to be <laughs> like a huge lollipop. Mm. And one of those huge gummy bears. It's the size of a long arm. Oh, yeah. It's a battle axe. Yeah. Okay. Is this operation particularly bold or daring? Take plus 1D if so. What do you think? I would say so. We're going to the belly of the beast. It's pretty crazy. Okay. Is this operation overly complex or contingent on many factors? Not really. No. Okay. All right. So we're up to two dice. Does the plan's detail expose a vulnerability of the target or hit them where they're the weakest? I, I don't think so. Definitely going at the strongest point. Is the target strongest against this approach? Or do they have particular defensive and special <laughs> preparations? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I didn't say that. Take negative one die. Okay, oh. I think we're back down to one die here. Excellent. Good. Perfect. I'm sorry, everyone. Can any of your friends or contacts provide aid or insight for this operation? I think so. You've already gotten help from your contact, so I'll count that as plus one. Yeah. Are there any enemies or rivals interfering in the operation? I hope not. Uh, maybe. Let me just check this clock. My rival works so long. Not yet. Are there any other elements that you want to consider? Oh, yeah, how are we getting out? That's, I don't know. That's pretty significant. Good question. Mm-hmm. Maybe just the way you came. Hopefully, hey, our delivery is done. Bye. Everything goes the way it should. We don't. They don't even know that we're not a maintenance band that's delivering packages. Mm-hmm. Yep. There you go. Okay. So I guess we are at two dice. Then is that where we left off? I'm here for it. Okay. Oh no, there is something that will give you one more die. Oh, it's a smuggling mission, Ooh. isn't it? It's a smuggling mission. Hey, the getaway. Okay, let's submit. That's, oh, there we go. Five. A five. Okay. Risky situation to begin with. As normal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Better than the alternative of desperate. Always risky standard. Until we get desperate. Great. Our good friend. 
That should be the tagline for the season, a risky standard. <laughs> That's us, the risky standard, my favorite mm-hmm. poker game. Uh, you spent you spent a while in Desperate last time. I don't know what you're talking about. Nothing happened. A lot of, a lot of time in Desperate. 